I'm going to take you through the materials and tools that we're going to use for this project. First, you need a ring core. You buy this in the size that you will wear because it won't shrink. And there are several different shapes that you can buy, but the one that we're going to use today is this one that has a channel in the inside and two raised sides. We also need some silver art clay. I've got 10 grams here. And then we also need either some silver art clay paste or some paste maker. Now you make these up in a similar way. Um, this is how we're going to get the clay to stick to the ring band. And you either use some art clay paste and if you don't have that, you take a pea sized lump of clay, spritz some water to it to make a paste that's consistent of about a bit thicker than single cream. If you would prefer to try something different, you can use this, which is pacemaker. Now I haven't used this before. Um, I've seen a metal clay artist called Joy Funnel who produces some fantastic rings using ring cores. She uses this and what she does is take a pea sized lump of clay and adds some drops of pacemaker to it. So it will give a similar sort of paste, but this is specifically designed to add fired pieces. The new art clay paste um, has changed formula now so it's better for fired pieces so this is an either or situation and you can decide which one you want to use I am going to use this one because I haven't used it before you need a teflon or a non-stick surface to work on you need a little tub with a lid that you spritz some water in the bottom and then you can store your clay in there when you're not using it a spritzer bottle is great, really handy. If you don't have that, just get a little tub of water next to you and put some uh, just normal tap water will be fine. To lubricate any surfaces you need, you can use this, which is a metal clay balm, um, sometimes called badger balm. Or if you don't have that, you can use a drop of olive oil. Be very sparing with the olive oil though. When you're rolling out your clay, you need a um, plastic or acrylic roller. Do not use a wooden roller because the clay will stick to that. And for most metal clay projects you roll clay out to certain depths. I'm going to roll out to one millimetre which is the equivalent of four playing cards and also 1.5 millimetre which is the equivalent of six playing cards. So you don't have to have these, you can use playing cards. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to use this today, but this is a metal clay pick. It's Well, actually, this one isn't. This one is designed for card making, but I use this to cut out a lot of shapes in clay. I don't know if we're going to be using this, but if you haven't got this, um, as I said, don't worry, because I don't think we're going to use this in the project, but I'm showing it to you in case we do. But you can buy different versions from uh, metal clay that are like this. And they're specifically designed for metal clay. It's a one-off purchase, good to have. Um, we are going to use this, however, which is a silicon or rubber tip tool. Um, they are fabulous for um, going over seams and joins. If you don't have this, you can use your finger or you could use a paintbrush. So don't panic if you haven't got that. Um, but if you want to invest in some of those, they're really good. They come in different sizes and different shapes as well. To cut our clay out, we've got various different options. We can use a um, tissue blade or a, a clay cutter. If you have worked with polymer clay, you'll probably have one of those. If you haven't got one of those, then you could use a normal ruler. Stainless steel are better than the plastic and um, a tissue blade, either a bendy or a straight one. Better really for straight edges to get one that isn't bendy, but uh, if you haven't got that, that's fine. Or a scalpel, which works just as well as the blades. Now I'm going to use this today because this is one of my favorite tools. I use this a lot when I'm making rings. This is called a ribbon cutter and it literally gives you strips of clay. Um, for this project, if you want to use one of these, you want the uh, ribbon cutter that is just slightly wider than the ring core. I don't know if you can see that. Let's see if I can get it to angle. It's just slightly wider. So I'm going to use one of those today. 
I'm also going to use a texture mat to give my uh, the inner in a bit of my my ring a nice texture I particularly like this product this is um, a product by cool tools and it's called cool slip and I use this on nearly every um, surface that I work on that's creating a texture especially on wallpapers um, it one spritz of this is plenty enough to lubricate a surface uh, I really like that if you haven't got that the olive oil or the the balm works just as well lastly we will need some sanding pads I like the blue ones we're going to use the 800 grit but if you have gray ones it will be fine we're only going to use those very briefly anyway today and then the very last thing is we need a brass brush to polish our ring right at the end okay let's get on with the project Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make up a paste using the paste maker. And as I said earlier, if you just wanted to use the art clay paste or make your own paste, you can. But for this project, I'm going to try using the paste maker. So the instructions are very clear. They're on the back. They say to get a pea size lump of clay. So that's what I've got in there. And then it says to add six to eight drops of this pacemaker so let's have a go one two oh, three four five six i'll do seven i'll go middle of the road now i've just got a tool here that i i quite like to um, mix my clay with so i'm going to and it says on the bottle that you need to mix it until you get a sort of a cream consistency. So very similar to how you were making paste, but you make that with just water. So let's see. It's getting stuck. Right, well that is coming together slowly and it is starting to form a paste. It's got quite a strong smell actually. It's not wholly unpleasant. I can't quite put my finger on what it is. It does smell a little bit like lavender, but I don't know that it's got lavender in it. Okay. Right, I'm gonna carry on mixing that up and then I'll come back when that's all done. What we want to do after we've made our paste is we want to just roughen up this internal channel a little bit, just to give it a key for um, to receive the clay. So I've cut up some 800 grit of the sandpaper and I'm just going to go into the channel and just rough it up a bit. So you'll see it just takes the shine off. That's all you're hoping to do at this stage. You don't need to do anything more than just knock the shine back. Doesn't take too long to do. Just make sure you go all the way around the ring band. We are going to polish the outside bits of this later. So it's really only the inside that you need to do this to. Nearly there. Okay, so what we will then do is we will then cover the inside of the channel. So this bit that I'm roughing up here now, there we are, I've gone all the way around with some of the paste that I prepared earlier. So I'm gonna get a brush and I'm going to get one that has bristles that won't shed. And this is my mixed paste now. And you can see it's sort of fairly, fairly runny. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add that. Luckily it's not gonna spill out of there. And I'm just gonna paint fairly liberally onto the internal channel. And 
it doesn't matter if you get it onto the sides. You don't want it on the very top sides because they will show, but you want the clay to be able to stick on the inside. So make sure you go around and give it a really nice, generous coating all the way around. Okay, when you've done that, you set it aside to dry. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to wipe off the excess from around the tops and then I'm going to come back uh, when it's dry and we'll move on to the next stage. So here's a ring core now that's dried and you can see that the paste has given us a nice white finish to the inside of the channel. When you're using ring cores, um, because the outside doesn't shrink, but your clay does, you have to do a couple of things to make sure that when this is fired, the um, inside clay that you're adding doesn't uh, pull away and open from the band. So you need to have an overlap. When you put your clay around, you need to overlap one side of the clay to the other. If you don't, what will happen is when it's fired, any weak areas, and if you just abutted two edges together, that would be a weak edge. It might open during the firing. Now, I've had that happen to me before. It's a simple repair job afterwards because you add more clay to that area, but you don't really want that to happen if you can help it. So the best thing to do is to cut it with an overlap to begin with, but this does give some challenges in itself. If you're using just a plain clay without any design on it, it's absolutely fine because you can overlap the clay and then where the um, join is overlapped, you literally uh, pull the clay from one side to the other using um, a, a wet finger and you can get that to be absolutely seamless. If you're using a textured um, or a patterned part of clay to go inside the core, you have more of a challenge because obviously if you're smoothing it, you're smoothing the texture away. So you do have to be a bit mindful of what you do in that instance. So you do need an overlap, but in that instance, you would then try and just work on the area of the join without affecting the other areas. When you think the join is good enough, you've set it aside to dry, then when it's dry, get it out again, slightly dampen the clay back with some water, really slightly, and get your texture mat and push your texture mat just gently over the top of it to get an imprint. So that's a way of getting it seamless. The other thing, and this is why I love these, these ring cores actually, is they're great if you're going to put a top to a ring on. Um, if you do, Anywhere where you have the seam is great because you can put the top of the ring on that part and that completely hides any of the uh, seam or lack of texture underneath. So they're just things for you to bear in mind when you're using these ring cores. Now I'm going to use a textured one today and I'm going to have an overlap but I am going to use it. I'm going to make this into a ring with a, a top on it afterwards. So although I am going to work on the on the join, I'm not going to work on it um, so that it's completely invisible. I'm not going to spend too much time on it. So let's now fill the core. So we need our clay. So we've got our 10 grams of clay. Just in your hands, you want to get it into a sausage, which will encourage it to roll into a long, thin ring shape. I've got my 1.5 millimeter spacers on either side, equivalent to six playing cards on either side. And I'm going to roll the clay out. Now that's squidging out a little bit too far. So what I like to do is get the spacers and push the clay inwards like that. And again, roll. And it just encourages it to get a bit more length and a little bit less width when you're rolling. I'm not really too worried because I'm going to texture this and I'm going to go down to one millimetre on either side. So by altering the depth and making it a thinner depth, it will roll thinner anyway. 
sorry, it will roll longer anyway. So in fact, I'm probably not gonna do much more than that because by eye, I know that that's going to be long enough to go around the ring band now. So I'll stop there. I don't wanna overwork the clay. I'm gonna add my one millimeter spacers to either side. What I am going to do is I'm going to lubricate my work surface, my texture mat here with a bit of cool slip. And I'm gonna do that off camera because this can get quite wet and slippy and I don't want it on my clay. So I've just put one spray of the cool slip on the texture mat. I'm just gonna rub it all over, but it is a bit, a bit oily. So I'm just gonna get a baby wipe and just dab the excess off. If you don't dab, dab the excess off, it will go onto the clay and make the clay quite slippery and oily. Okay, I'm gonna push my one millimeter spacers together because I want the texture mat to sit on top of the spacers so that they will regulate the depth of the clay and ensure that it doesn't go any less than one millimeter in depth. So I'm gonna roll this over the clay pressing quite firmly and there we have the textured clay so I'll bring that up to the camera so that you can see that okay so the next stage we need the ribbon cutter now I mentioned before that my ribbon cutter is slightly wider than the actual ring core and I want it to be slightly smaller because what I want is I want the clay to sit in that channel and then when it shrinks, it will come away from the sides a bit and I'm gonna use some liver of sulfur to give me a black channel either side, which I think will look quite pretty. So I'm gonna press down, oops. I'm gonna press down into the clay with the ribbon cutter. and take it away. Now I'm going to use probably that one there because it's the longest and it has a nice design on it. So I'm gonna try and get the clay off. It's just sticking a bit. That's fine, it will come off. It just needs a bit of encouragement. He doesn't want to come there we are let's come away now and we'll take that part away now this is my nice fresh clay so I want to keep it nice and fresh for another project roll it up and put it back in the pot that's already got a spritz of water in there so it'll keep it nice and pliable now, I know that the ring core, as I said, is slightly wider. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take a tiny edge off the clay because, as I said, I want it to sit in to the ring core itself. So I've taken an edge away and you can see it's really a tiny weeny little edge that I've taken away, but that will be enough for it to sit inside the ring core nicely. I'm going to turn the clay over very gently. Oh, no, I haven't turned it over. Folded itself back, there we are, there. That end I will cut off because you can see it's bent a little bit. I'm gonna put some water onto the back of the clay and that will encourage it to adhere to the paste on the inside and also it should hopefully minimize any cracking to the clay as I wrap it around the band. I'll put that away in a minute. Okay, so I'm going to gently pick this up and place over my ring band. Now I don't want to stretch it so I'm being very careful how I put that around the band and you can see it's almost a perfect fit. So I'm going to just press it gently into the core so that it gets a key 
and grabs the clay underneath. Now you can see I've got an overlap, which is exactly what I want. I don't know if you can see that. There we are. Now what I'm going to do is just pull the top bit back and with the edge of the clay here, the inside edge, I'm going to really push it down into the core because when I overlap these, I don't want too much bulk and that's always the danger that you end up with a, a bulky area. So I'm now pushing it back so it overlaps and I can see I want to cut it about there. So with my tissue blade, I'm just going to cut the very top layer. and I'm just gonna try and chamfer it towards me slightly. Have I cut through that enough? Yeah, there we are. And because I've chamfered it now, I'm going to be able to pull one edge over to the other edge because if you can see at the minute, it's a bit raised. So what I want for that is my rubber tip tool and I'm going to dip it in some water and I'm just going to press it down gently and pull it across. By pulling it across, you're knitting the two sides together. I'm just putting a little bit of water on that, just to smooth over that seam. Okay, I'm really happy with that actually. What you can see here, however, is where I've squidged it down, it's just gone slightly onto the edge so I'm just going to take that away, just with my tissue blade. And in fact, if you want, if you're a bit nervous about doing that, you can do that when it's dry. And in fact, I think I will do it when it's dry. So finally, I'm just gonna go around the band, pressing in slightly to encourage the clay to adhere to the paste. Just working on that joint area a bit more. And that's now ready to go into the dryer um, or to be left to dry. An oven or um, a dehydrator at 110 degrees for approximately 15 to 20 minutes. The longer you leave it, the better. On a hot radiator or in a warm room, you need to leave it for several hours um, and then come back to it after that. So. I'm just going to do a slight bit more tidying up, then I'm putting this to dry. Okay, here's my ring core and it's now dry. Let me see if I can get that in focus. There we are. And the area that we're looking at there is the seam where we joined the two sides of the clay together. And you can see that it's um, almost invisible now. I've got a tiny bit more cleaning up to do on this ring, but I have done some off camera. You do need to get up close and personal when you're cleaning to make sure that you haven't got any lumps and bumps. And the way that I've done that for, I've gone round the channel with my tissue blade in a sort of a gentle sawing motion. And then with a dry paintbrush, I've just cleaned out those channels. Because as I said, I do want the channel to show in this. If you didn't want to have a channel, then your clay would have, you would have wrapped your clay so it would have gone over the top of the sides of these walls. But as I said, I want a channel, so I've had to clean those out. You can see there's a little bit of silver still in the channels, which is absolutely fine because they are silver and so they're not going to show, but it's any areas that are um, loose or look like loose dust in those channels. I'm just trying to see if I can find a bit that maybe I haven't picked up. Mm, they're looking pretty good. Just there, which is on the join, you can see there's a little bit of raised clay, so I might just get a tiny sanding sponge on that and just, just sand that back a little bit and then use the dry paintbrush to take any bits away. Um, there was also some paste on this outside rim, or actually on the top of the channel here. Uh, I haven't bothered too much about that because it is silver, so it's going to fire intact with the ring. 
but oh, there we are you can see there are some little bits just inside that channel there so I do need to just clean that up a bit better anything that you see now in terms of um, issues will be there when firing so it's best to um, and on the fired piece so it's best to clean up now rather than later to fire this, you would put this either in a kiln according to your manufacturer's instructions. This is silver arc clay. I'm going to fire this at 800 degree, degrees for about 30 minutes. Um, you could do it for even less. I think at 800 degrees, the minimum you can fire for is 10 minutes, but I'm gonna do it for a little bit longer. On a gas hob, you would put it on a wire mesh with the flame underneath and you would watch for the binders to burn off so you get a little bit of smoke and a small flame that goes about an inch high. Once those have um, burnt off, the binders have burnt off, leave it on the gas hob for at least 10 minutes, the longer the better. Exactly the same with the torch. Um, if you've got a clay that will torch fire, put it on a firing brick, fire, keeping the, the flame going all the way around the ring to get an even temperature, watch for the binders to burn off and then carry on firing for at least 10 minutes. Okay, so I'm going to fire this. I'm going to do, actually, I'm going to do a final bit of cleaning, then I'm going to fire this and then I'm going to come back and show you the uh, fired result. So here's the ring out of the kiln. As you can see, um, the ring core itself has got uh, a slight amount of oxidization, so it looks black against the very white of the uh, fine silver arc clay. You can also see that it's shrunk in from or both ways that way uh, from the ring core and under here you can see in the channel, if I get a bit closer you can see in the channel some of the white paste which is absolutely fine because that paste was mixed with silver arc clay so that is silver. So to clean this up we get a wire brush and some washing up liquid in some water and we just give it a really vigorous brush. And what you'll see there is it's already, the white is disappearing. Let me see if I can just get that in focus a bit better for you. There we are. The white is disappearing and the silver is starting to show through. So some vigorous brushing for 10 to 15 minutes will get that all lovely and clean. Um, if you're having problems with the inside, you can get some polishing papers um, or some very light sanding pads and just go in, wrap them round a pencil and clean inside the band. I'm gonna come back when that's clean and show you the final result. So here's the finished ring. It's all been polished and it's lovely and shiny and you can see the texture. There's also no evidence of where I've joined the clay, so that's fabulous. And the inside of the ring band now has lost the black look and it's taken on a lovely silver mirror finish. One thing I forgot to mention earlier on, if you were going to add a top to this to make this a, um, a statement ring, you wouldn't fire it first, you wouldn't fire this bit. You would, do, you would add the top bit on and then fire. But if at a later date you have one of these and you think, oh, I'd quite like to add something to the top of this, with the new silver arc clay paste, you can just make up a paste and um, add the two pieces together and then fire again. So there it is. Just so that you can see this design a little bit better, I'm going to show you what it's like when I've put a patina on it using liver of sulphur. Here's the ring now that I've applied a patina to using liver of sulphur. And the, you can see that the edges of where the clay have been, where they've come away from the actual ring core, it's created a lovely channel and the liver of sulphur has gone in that channel and so I've got now two black bands running around the edges, which is really the look I was after because I'm, the ring I'm going to make is medieval looking. So I think this fits the bill absolutely perfectly. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and um, good luck when you're using the ring cores.